Father, we receive the fire of your word, the fire of your spirit, the fire of your presence. Lord, burn off any distractions now so we can receive only what you've got for us. No more, no less. Burn in me. Burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. Amen. Amen. How y'all doing? Jeannie, good to see you back there. Hi. I don't know. Way back there. Scotty. Hi, Scotty now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you ready to roll on this? <clears throat> Say reach. 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 Okay, do this. Reach. reach. Okay. Say time to, time to increase my wingspan. Okay, that's where we're going, okay? We're doing first fruits for God's second biblical month. It's called the month of Iyer, sometimes also known as Ziv, and it's linked with the tribe of Issachar. So just a couple quick things. One. We function under a watchman apostolic anointing. We didn't ask for that. That was commissioned on us <laughs> by Chuck Pierce. We were just going to get individually, and he suddenly, boom. And so what that means is that we are responsible for being on the wall and paying attention to what's going on. Because a watchman has a responsibility to see what's going and then sound the alarm, right? You get that. The apostolic is involved in the fact that it's involved in then sending people based on what's going on and where people need to be sent, right? That we're doing that actively. And so we do this with times and seasons because God's word simply has links to time. It's that simple. And we simply note and then watch, and then we do what Revelation says to do seven different times, hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Okay, so we do that. But again, we'll start with one of my favorite analogies, which is the bride. Now, you will notice it is the bride, right? As in the bride of Christ. But like any bride, she has to leave her old ways. This is a challenge that the bride has with the groom, right? <laughs> with the bride. Leaving the old ways. It's got to turn those that were from her youth, learn the ways of the groom, and many things are challenging. How many of you married? Yeah, the challenges of being married or of thinking about getting married, okay? It's not to be entered lightly because there are a lot of shifts that you got to do. Some adjustments are very easy to make, right? Those of you who are married, some of them were just no big deal. Some of them were like gnarly. <laughs> some of them you never made or you're still making, I don't know. So some are hard. Some are minor and some are just really critical. And we believe that one of the critical things that the bride is still struggling with, the bride of Christ with the groom, is the issue about time. Because any two married people always have very different concepts about what it means to be early or late or on time. And every time I say that, there's a whole bunch of grins around the room. <laughs> and usually it's by both halves of, uh, of the couple. So we align in time and we come back to this about first fruits, which is simply out of Proverbs. And it says, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, we have a group here who has no problem with new wine, right? Okay. Both in the spirit and in the natural. Okay, yeah, I have head spobbing for that. Okay. That's why we make the communion cups the little ones. Afraid if we pass the big one around, it would only go so far and it'd be empty. So anyway, but this is simply a biblical principle. And we see it reiterated with Jesus when he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these things are added. 
But I love to connect this back in. I just do sometimes a few little introductory remarks about this that celebrating the new month, which is God's cycle of time he orchestrated, is going to continue when God has created a new heaven and new earth. For just as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, will endure before me, declares the Lord, so your descendants and your name will endure from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come to worship before me, says the Lord. So it's just interesting to me, right? It's just, it ain't, we don't know exactly how it's going to be and we don't get uptight about it. We're not legalistic because Paul says, don't let anybody judge you about one day being better than another. That's the, you know, they foreshadow. So we don't judge on that, but we think there's a blessing to align in time since God's going to keep doing it. So another quick reference that we're that's timely right now is this one, counting the Omar or the sheaf. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering barley, count off seven full weeks, count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then present an offering of new grain wheat to the Lord. Okay, so there's a 50 link in here. And where it links back to is what we call Resurrection Sunday, right? In the Old Testament, it was called the Feast of what? No. That that first, where do you, first fruits. First fruits, thank you. Yes, first fruits, okay. Boy, you guys were a little slow on that. What am I? I just, everybody needs to stand up and do jumping jacks. Are you okay? Say brain, come awake. Okay. Well, well, that's good. And it, it can co coalesce with that. Yes, it's true. It's, well, actually, it's usually closer to the full moon because it's in the 15th. Yeah. Yep. New moon would be on the first. Okay. So God says, look, I've got these, this time and I want to make sure you get the connection between Passover and Pentecost. And so I've got you every single day. You're going, okay, this is the third day of counting the omen. This is the fourth or the fifth. And so you're counting up with that because he says, I need to make it very clear to my people that these things are inexorably, inexorably, inex come on. I, what's when I look, they're interconnected. Yeah. But man, I just fell off the caboose of my vocabulary. Inexorably. Thank you. I had the, thank you. I had the wrong ascent on the proper syllable. So thank you. That was that Richard back there or was that Hugh? Hugh? Okay. Thank you. I won't try to do it again. Cause I'll just, you know, I had a, just a little bit of that communion wine, but it didn't. Okay. So God is saying, look, I, I need these things linked. You need to get that as amazing as Passover was and the Feast of Unleavened Bread and all the freedom and all the liberty and getting out of Egypt and the plagues and everything else. There's more. And if you don't get this connection here, you're going to miss the more that I have for you. So he lays that out because he wants us to move from blessing to blessing. And the church, the early church understood this. But about 325 when Constantine took over and he said, no more doing this feast stuff. Well, then it broke that. And so sometimes we get it. Sometimes we don't. Most often we don't see how closely those are interlinked. And so the idea is that this strong link between the two has to be maintained. And so when we come out of the first month here and we're heading towards the third month, which is going to be on Mount Sinai, this link has to be maintained. And so we're going to move from just being freed to being full. That sound good? Okay. You want to be free, but you want to be full too, right? Okay. And we move from being saved to being sanctified, right? Set aside. You move from being sealed by the Spirit to being saturated by the Spirit. Okay? We actually kind of move from what God accomplished for us to what God accomplishes with us. Okay? And so you, you got to get the links here and how that works in there. And then all of this kind of morphs us out into this time there, which is that second month and God's got a few things to do in that, and in, we're going to get there, but he's going to lose some teaching, some training, some testing, and some transition in all that. That makes sense? Because frankly, to get over here from free to full, from saved to sanctified, etc., things have to happen. Link's got to be there, and there's a process that God takes us through in that. And in the middle of all that is this second month, and it's called IR. Okay, say IR. 
I are what I are. So sorry. Okay, just couldn't <laughs> let it go. Okay. Anyway, why is it green? It's because I chose it. Because it's about okay. Well, because it's it's about green things and everything else. But I'm going to put this in the center of it because healing is tied to this month. It's very critical because the name the the Hebrew characters IR that you have there are an acrostic. LOL means what? Laugh out loud. Right? What's I don't know? IDK. Okay. See, some of you know that. Some of you are like a clueless. Okay. Well, just like you, if you're older, might have to be tuned into that the same way with the Hebrew. A lot of the church would not tune into it, not used to studying it. Someone who knows Hebrew would and know that those four letters form an acrostic. So the second month, IR, and it comes to this. It's linked right in here. If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, this is the Lord speaking. I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. That's the acrostic for IR. Okay. Yahweh Rapha. I am the God who heals you. Okay, so it's a time of healing in the midst of all that. You're probably okay when I talked about teaching and training. When I got to the testing part, everybody bristles a little bit. How many of you like tests when you were in school? Okay, okay we're not acting. Okay, you, you never, you never like. Did you like a? Sometimes, yeah. I mean. If, if you knew the material cold, there could be something very satisfying because you like, okay, you know, I mean, I used to study my brains out and then it felt like I mentally threw up on a page, you know. <laughs> now, if you'd asked me two days later, but man, I could, I could go down and nail it and it took a lot of work. So there's, there's times. Now, a lot of you have had a test that you've passed and felt good about. It might have been your driver's test. That would have been an okay one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of different ways you do that. Okay, so let's just again look at this layout. So first month connects obviously with Egypt, with Passover, of course with the crucifixion and the resurrection, the celebration of first fruits aligns with the time when Jesus is raised from the dead. Now we're looking forward to Mount Sinai, which is in the third month when God is going to show up, right, in fire and earthquake and everything else, and Israel is going to hear his voice, scare the snot out of them. But what the Lord's going to impart is the word, is Torah. And it's said that they, it's not enough to be free. You have to be brought together. Okay? And the same can be said here because we know that fast forward a couple thousand years, right? And we have the feast Pentecost. That's why they're gathered. That's why they're studying all night in the upper room when the fire of the Holy Spirit falls. And so this second month has always been a hinge between the two. Okay? And we get that, but something that God was just stirring in me this year was about really helping me understand it's about the human hinge. Say, I'm a human hinge. <laughs> yeah, because it's not just that this month and the events in it hold these together. Yeah, some of you are very unhinged. Yes. Thank you. It was my wife who said that. <laughs> it's because she meets with a lot of you and she knows just how unhinged. And she lives with me, so that... that goes without saying. But the idea being is that to facilitate this, we have to reach back and we've got to reach forward to get what God has here. Okay. And when you do that, it'll increase your wingspan. Okay. So let me just touch on this. This is going to be kind of an assignment for you guys when you're out of here. Okay. Reach back. What do you reach back to? You got to reach back to what God has done. The word remember is used 230 times in scripture. Let me get you just one reference here out of Exodus. Remember this day in which you went out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out of this place. The first part of the reach and the reach back is all the ways, thinking about all the ways in which he delivered you. Now, he delivered you into things and out of things, okay? There's both. How about just into, into physical life? How many of you here were born physically? I have a couple who didn't raise their hands. 
Would somebody check them out. They might be angels just taking physical form. Although I know one of the persons back there and she's no angel. So anyway, um, <clears throat> no, no, right, right. Do you know what the odds are? Do you know that genetically there, you have a greater chance of becoming president of the United States than having been born? It's just, it's just much, much better. The percentage chance of you being born you is, is I, I'll bring that video sometime. I'll do the math. It's astronomical. You have a far better chance of becoming president than of being just being born. Okay. Hey, hello. No, I'm serious. It's just, let alone being born Hugh, you, or being born Hugh, you're, Hugh, you're back there. Being born you here and now and in this situation. Okay. It's just. Anyway, we won't go into it. But you were also brought you, delivered you into spiritual life, right? Because we were all dead in sin and trespass. Okay? And then what about the fullness of the Spirit? Is the Spirit in you? Oh, man, how can you, you need all that he's got. How about just time after time after time he delivered some, you into a situation, right? And how about out of? That's probably an easier one. How many times did he deliver you out of illness? Okay? How many times did he deliver you out of a situation where you could have died? And you didn't, you know what? You won't even know it. I mean, you won't even know it. You, you'll get up there, you'll get up there, and you meet all these worn out angels. Oh, yeah, I'm destiny number five. Five? Oh, yeah, number 342 is down at the bottom. They're all worn out from all the ways they had to protect, right? You get... Yeah, don't worry. Joel's got about three thousand, so it's just, yeah. No, we've all you've been in situations where you you just know you saw something happen and you knew if you had been there a second earlier. Okay, just just stuff, the ways that he has delivered you out of, and then what about out of the mistakes? Oh my goodness, out of the the heartache and the mistakes. Oh man, I almost took that job. I almost married this person. I almost dated this one. I almost whatever. Okay. And then just delivering us out of sin. How many of you have been delivered out of sin and out of the nature? You know, it's not just that you've been forgiven. That's great. But you're being transformed and he's constantly delivering you out. So the reach back, I want to challenge you is sit down and make a list. I want just a piece of paper and reach back about all his faithfulness. Okay. And yes, you can go to scripture and all the things he did, but do it personally. That's what he was asking Israel to do. Remember. Okay, you got to reach back because that gives you an anchor. You don't look and pine to go back. That's a different thing, right? That's a leeks and onions by the Nile kind of thing. That's not, oh, I wish. No, but oh, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just get some and reach out. You good with that, Aaron? Okay. And now what about reaching forward? And by the way, you notice this is a harvest field, just so you know. There, there's, there's just, you notice the first slide, that woman's standing in a harvest field with, the wing. How about this verse from Paul? I strive to lay hold of that for which Christ laid hold of me. Yeah? It's an earnestness. So how about this for some ideas? Reach. Say reach. reach. Okay, this time to all the promises you have yet to grasp. Do a study on the word promises. There's over 100 references in Scripture. But people who have diligently gone through it to look at all the different ways that God has promised things end up with coming up with numbers somewhere between 3,000 and 8,000 in Scripture. Because in Christ Jesus, all the promises of God are yes, yes and amen. So you've got to be willing to look forward. Now, that's still a little generic, so bear it down. How about words you just set in your heart? The things you, you have sensed in here, you've heard him speak into your heart. You know what I'm talking about, right? Maybe there wasn't even an audible word, but there was something that rose up in you and you said, okay, I know that's, you know, wow. But you haven't quite grasped it yet. Okay. Robert Browning uh, had a poem, uh, a line that I just, I don't know, I knew it from real young about a man's reach should exceed his grasp or what's heaven for in other words you've got to have something because you have to be stretching 
Okay. But I don't want it to be vague. I want it to be specific because the idea here of, of increasing our wingspan is because we're getting ready for the more of Pentecost. Yeah. And all that's there. But this is this preparation time. How about this? <clears throat> How about words from scripture that just lit you up? Maybe those are two separate things or the same thing. But you know what I'm talking about. There's times you've been reading something in the, in the word and it just went, oh, yep. right? Yes. Read the same thing a dozen times, never got, so, oh, and you just got, you got a little zap from the spirit, right? There was something in there, something in there, something in there. There was a moment of faith arising in you and you went, I want that. Cindy Jacobs is some wild and crazy woman, right? But as a young girl, she would be reading her scripture and somebody, you know, healed somebody and she'd write in her margin, I'm going to do that. And somebody, Jesus would raise somebody from the dead. I'm going to do that. Okay. You, you got it. Okay. As a, as a young kid. Okay. And she's walked in virtually all of that. Okay. That, that often is just, that was as a child somehow she had a sense of, okay, I'm going to, and she wrote in her Bible. I'm going to do that. Okay. How about this? Prophetic words that have been released over you. If you've had prophetic words, good time to go back and listen to them. Bring them up. Challenge them. So you're reaching back, but then you're reaching forward. But again, the more tangible, do not be vague about this, folks. Oh, yeah, the promises of God. Oh, yeah, one day I'll be in heaven. Whatever. Come on. Now, one day in the new heaven and the new earth, I'm going to climb Everest with three of the guys from the prison in our new bodies. I'm going to roll up to whole pride of lions and I'm going to do giant belly rubs on every one of them. <laughs> if they'll let me. Right? Come on, come on. Be... Did, that, 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 but yeah, they'll be right. I'll roll over and play dead first, but no, can you imagine though? That's one of my favorite things is thinking about in a restored in the new heaven and the new earth when all things are made new. I just, I love creation and it's phenomenal now. I can't imagine once the veil has been pulled back, it's being held back. So be specific. Who doing what, how, what, what are you going to see? And what? What in this life has, is just there? I want you to be reaching for it. So again, one side, make this what you reach back and the other what you reach forward for. Do you make sense? Now, why? Because you want to develop this. That's what you call wingspan, by the way. <laughs> they actually measure that in, in professional athletes. This guy here, for instance, he's 6'4", but he has a seven-foot wingspan. Okay? Yeah. And can hold those two balls like that, right? And tremendous advantages to that. Having a, a yak, yeah, because I mean, dunking and stuff like this, just much easier. Doesn't have to jump so high. Blocking and everything else, right? I love his smile on this guy's face. It's, it's just a great. And there, there's guys, I think the lar longest one I saw was just eight feet, one inches was the biggest wingspan of any NBA player. And, uh, but no, it's not Shaq actually. No, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't have his name, but I'll get it. How about, here's another occasion of wingspan. Just like there was a positive effect for that guy in, in competition, there's one here, right? How many of you ever did breaststroke? Swam, swam, okay. Brutal stroke, brutal stroke, butterfly rather, butterfly, sorry. Butterfly, okay. We all do breaststroke, you know, that's easy. I had a friend who did that competitively. I went, really? Breaststroke? You know, it just kind of seems anyway, but he had shoulders out to here and he was like one or number one or two in the state when we were in high school and got a scholarship to uh, University of Illinois and everything. But I just, sorry. <laughs> now this one though, this one is a killer. This one I can get about one or two strokes out of and I'm like, okay, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Whoever thought of that as a way to swim? I don't get that. But again, the wingspan, right? You get it stretching out and they're doing it. So the question is then how will your wingspan increase? Yeah? Makes sense? Because you're the human hinge. 
Say, I'm the human hinge. Yeah. Now, we'll get to that because there's sometimes stress on the central part of that hinge. Okay. So then quickly, some things that are covered in this very time. When we look at scripture, we look at things that God has time stamped and say, okay, there's got to be a reason for that now. And here are some of the links in the chain that take us from the first to the third month in the Old Testament. We're counting seven sets of seven days. You have the bitter water that was made sweet. I'm not going to go through all of these. How many of you got the ping? How many of you read it? Okay, those who didn't get it, what? You're not getting the ping? Okay, it's, it's an email that goes out. It briefs you about what's going on. gives you some directions for what to pray. So just get me your email. Same for anybody who's out there. Um, and we'll, we'll get you on that. But then there are links then to scriptures so you can go in and read them. This one was pretty big. I gave you a lot of scripture to read. How many read? Who read all of them? Oh, wow. Good for you guys. Those are some long things because I want to give you the context. But guys, if you don't do that, the reason being, this is not a spectator sport here. Hello. I'm not going to beat you over the head, but you need to do some, you need to be praying for this time because you're sowing in and you need to be looking at some of the scriptures because God will stir things up. That's why we do it. So that you come in and the pump's already primed. Okay. Because we're trying to tag into scriptures that we think the Lord wants to direct us to in this time. And if you're chewing on them, you're going to see things I miss completely. Right? And you're going to bring that in by the Spirit. Hello? Okay. And because you need to be a Berean, you need to always be going back into the Word to confirm that these things are so. Right? Okay. So that's about as hard as I'm going to get on you with that. But please do that. So if you remember, right, three days without water after they have the big Yahoo and all of Pharaoh's armies drowned and they party and celebrate and bring out the tambourine and all that. Great start. And then they walk three days without water. Hello. And when they get to it, it's bitter. Okay. That's one of the episodes. Another one is that they got the bread from heaven, right? Manna. Manna, which means what? What is it? <laughs> or in our current lingo, we wouldn't call it manna. We call it what? Do you have some what? Okay. You have to think about what it actually means, right? Just so you're having fun with it. Okay. Then there was water from the rock. Another time, right? With no water, they're so ticked off. They're ready to stone Moses, right? And he goes up. God says, I want you to walk back in front of those folks. Very ones who want to stone you. And I'm going to stand on the rock. And when you hit the rock, I'm going to make it rain. I'm going to spring the water out, right? A lot of them. Do you get the things that are tied into this month? Are you, hello, are you, there's a reason God put it in this month because these are all things he wants us to pay attention to. Where's the situation where there's no water and you're wondering how in the heck God's going to make this happen? Where's the rock you're supposed to stand on? What's he put in your hand? Do you, do you understand? What's the spiritual thing of that? Do not miss when God timestamps something and think it's just, okay, whatever. Didn't really matter. He just put it in time because he needed something to organize. Okay. Also in this time, Warfare 101. First time they engage in the battle, right? Moses, Aaron, and her go where? Up top. Down below is who? Fighters. Josh, led by Joshua. Okay. Two-tier strategy going on. First lesson in warfare. Then he gets into admin management because Moses is like wearing himself out. You got to remember, he's got two to three million people out there who are all grumpy. They're eating manna. They're not sure about the water supply. They just threw him for battle. And by the way, Gerald Spell stepped on my cat and killed it. <laughs> so poor old Moses is sitting there judging everything, right? And his father-in-law comes, Jethro. How's that for a father-in-law named Jethro? Well, Jethro... It's the hillbillies. Sorry, okay. Some of you going way back for that one, right? Okay. That's the only Jethro I knew of. Um, but Jethro comes in with wise counsel. says, look, this is not working. And he breaks it down. You got to have rulers over a thousand, over a hundred and over tens. They will resolve the small stuff and the big stuff they'll bring to you. Right? 
So it was a whole thing in understanding that what parts of your life are out of control that need to be administered. See, so hello. Do not think this is just God having a throwaway story. There's significance for us. And then aligned movement, they learn that they have to time when they move with when the ark and when the cloud goes. They don't just set off whenever. They stay in time and in sync. When the pillar goes, okay, now we go. Ark goes first and they follow. The presence first leads, yeah? Okay. All that stuff's happening in the second month. Sound impressive? Yeah, a lot of stuff in there, okay? Let's just pop out a couple of things. One, this about the bitter water, right? Three days to get to it. Now, when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. This is when the Lord releases the word about healing because he healed the waters so first thing up what kind of bitterness is in us anywhere for anything this is the time to deal with it folks hello hello sure you got your salvation you were busted out of egypt you were busted out of hell okay now what preparation 50 days counting up to pentecost when God shows up and speaks, it's said that because they weren't righteous enough, they couldn't bear to hear what God was saying from the mountain. Don't you want to be able to hear what God's saying? Okay. So just take that as a quick thing. What's the bitterness? Let them address it. We all need it in each other, right? We all need to sweeten up in some things. Except Gerald. He's picked on him, so I got to... Okay, do another one. This is about the rock. And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why is it that you have brought us out to Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. So he called the name of the place Masa, tempted, and Meribah, contention, because of the contention of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? I think this is a massive thing. Right? We, could, we could camp out on one of these things all night. When things are going sideways, okay, real critical, we mind the tongue, but you got to also mind your heart. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a real easy time for us to feel, to deal with entitlement, presumption, ingratitude. Okay. But the scariest part is this last line. The reason they tempted the Lord is because they said it's the Lord among us or not. Now you wouldn't say that, but you, you might say it like this. Well, God, where are you in this? Oh, hello. No? Okay, you're all fine. You all been there? <laughs> okay. How about this one? Just to touch on it again, the battle plan. And we hit it this pretty hard last year. I just want to remind you about it's so much about engaging on two fronts at the same time. Okay? There's the spiritual front. Deliberate, focused, attentive intercession and declaration. And it's not a solo event help is a good necessity. Why do we know that? Because Moses went up there and just wore himself out, right? And he had to have two people with him, Aaron and her. Okay. I don't know why it wasn't just him and her, but it was Aaron and her. But I'm bump. Okay. Y'all were looking a little too serious there. Maggie was falling asleep, so I had to get something out of there. No, but seriously, right? It's easy to get taken out in prayer and worn out if you don't have allies, right? The only reason that Kim and I continue to stand is the intercession that goes up. Okay? All y'all. The, the intercessors is a group specifically. And so that's why when I'm praying after I cover Kim and Levi, they're the first people that I have to cover. Okay? 
You got to help cover those who are covering you. Yeah. Okay. I read this years ago that Tom Brady used to always take incredible great care of the front linesmen. You know, there's five, the, the guards, the tackles, and the center. He always tried to buy him stuff and everything else because it was those five who took care of him. Yeah. <laughs> they were the five who protected his back. Okay. You, you got to learn how to do that. So we do that, but then we have to always remember that, meanwhile, Joshua was down in the trenches. Okay. And he was at it. And so in the natural, the natural fight calls for the best. Say the best. Yes. The best natural resources you can get. Because Moses said, you need to pick out the guys that are going to get this done. Okay. You got to pick out the ones that will do that. And, you know, when we're dealing with stuff spiritually and in the natural, you got to look at both prongs. Of, okay, what's the best that I can do in both? It's not a hit and run, but it's extended work, both in the natural and in the spirit. And you got to not grow weary. Do you remember that whenever Moses... Hands came down. What happened? Yeah, yeah. You know, you you got to think that those guys down in the trenches were looking up. You, you don't. You think they didn't see a connection over time? Hey, what's happening? The battle's turning. Crap. Okay. Yeah. And they saw it go up. Okay. And when they saw it go up, they're ready, right? They have confidence in that. Okay. You good so far? Keeping you? Okay, keep going here. Second links, uh, second month in the New Testament links between Passover and Pentecost that are there. It's 40 days, by the way, to Ascension, okay? But it's 50 days to Pentecost, two big things. So look in there, brass tacks. Jesus is going around dealing with brass tacks. One of those things is Thomas, right? Dealing with doubts. He does the breakfast along the seashore. I love this. This is in John 20, or is it 21? 21. Um, 21. When he, he's having, when they're out on the boat, man, I could just spend a week talking about that. They're out on the boat fishing. They haven't caught anything. They're going fishing because they haven't seen Jesus for a while. So they're doing what all men do. We go back to something we're comfortable with. Okay. I mean, you know, and we go back to something we can do. Of course, they go back to try to do it and they catch no fish all night. They, you know, yeah, yeah. Right. And suddenly they, they're aware that. They don't get it away at first because he says, hey, have you caught anything? Oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that from a landlubber when you're out in a boat, right? <laughs> Just, buddy, come on, you know. Anyway, so he gives them instructions, throw it on the right side of the boat, they catch all these fish. That's when John, the beloved, says, it's the Lord. And Peter, you got to love Peter, right? Because Peter, first one in the water. Don't you love the fact that he's always, whenever he sees Jesus, who's not in the boat, he goes and gets to him, whether it's walking on the water or swimming in the water, but one way or the other, he's getting to Jesus. You got to come on. You got to love this. Okay. And by the way, it says that it's 200 cubits. That's the length of a football field that he swam. That's just not a short distance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just think about that. Yeah. And butterfly stroke, doubtless. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I suspect it was breaststroke. <laughs> Not with Peter? Not with Peter? No, it's true. It's true. Peter probably would have done butterfly, I guess. You know. Anyway, okay. Okay, so, and in that, though, there's this incredible conversation that follows, right? And he's got to clarify things, and he deals with things in Peter. Kind of not so easy there. Three times the same. Do you love me more than these? You know, and we could go into is that there's a theological question whether these are the fish that he's just hauled in and the fishing, or these are the other disciples. Because Peter, if you remember, at one point say, they will may all deny you, but I will not. Right? I so I think it was the these was the them. And I think he's pointing out saying, Okay, dude, you just sank another time. Yeah. Bravely spoken, but not having the wherewithal to follow it up. But out of that confrontation, there's a commissioning and a promotion he's given and a clarification. And then, of course, a little while later, he goes in ascension with the angels. That's a whole significant event that happens. And when that happens, they go, okay, well, we're only 11 now. We got to figure this out. 
And so they asked the spirit, they cast lots, and they set in place a new disciple. And then they do this very critical thing. They wait and they watch. Yeah? There's a whole thing in that, in this transition time, when God says, stay, you stay. No? I mean, because there was the more. But Jesus, how, how do we hold this news in? You you rose from the dead. You did. This. It's amazing. We, we, we got to tell everybody. Stay. But there's places to go. Stay. Okay. You get this, right? So just a quick check on this, though, because this is sort of in the spirit what happens between Jesus and Peter, right? It's a loving thing, but he's got to knock something really down. And he's got to remove the stigma of the last season, of all that failure. So the three times, right? Three questions, three answers, three promotions, right? And then it's wrapped up with, follow me, yeah. So the relationship has to be connected. And he's got to do it in a way because it's public, because Peter's failure was incredibly public. He's got to be persistent about it because three is a significant number. And it's very personal. It's not, Peter, what do you think you would do next time? Peter, if you were in a different situation next time, what do you think you'd do? No, no, no hypotheticals. Just do you love me? And it's really, though, for the benefit of all. It's not just Peter. He has to do this to Peter in the company of those he dissed. Oh, they'll all deny you, right? And it has to be removed if they are all to move forward. I'm bringing this up because what's God got to deal with us in this time, okay? What's happening in there that we need to attend to? So let me give you a couple other anchor points because I think they're important with here. Some additional timestamps with the second month in scripture. Very interesting that the transitions, Solomon begins the temple in 1 Kings and Zerubbabel begins the second temple in Ezra 3. Interesting. Both of those start in the second month. And again, they're a hinge. Why? Because they're hearkening back to the tabernacle, to the presence of God, and they're reaching forward to the glory that's going to be there that God said would inhabit that place and the nations will come. Do you see this? So once and again, it's not finished. It's a start. So let me just give you the principle. I'm just connecting the dots, right? Out of what you've reached back for and you've seen all his faithfulness and what you're reaching for, what, what's the thing he's going to start in here? Put your hand here. Say, Lord, start it in me. Do you feel that? Somebody, maybe not, but you might have to just go, okay, Lord, whatever it is, start it. <laughs> okay. Let me give some other things because I think this is fascinating with this hinge month. Again, these are things that happen extra biblically, but about Jerusalem. First is in IR5 in 1948, Israel became a state. Why? Because it's reaching back to the promise God said about the land. Okay. But it's not fully grasped yet because all the enemies and everything else are still around. IR 18 and 48, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, was created. Okay? That was a big, big deal. And how about this? IR 28 to 1967, Jerusalem was reclaimed as a unified city. Okay? So all of these things have that hinge aspect of next but not fully. Do you get this? They're reaching back. It's there, and there's a tension and a stress in there. Okay, because of that now, am I covering too much? You good? Okay. This is just kind of giving you a flavor. It's all going to come back to the hinge. Say it all comes back to the hinge. Back to the hinge. I'm the hinge. hinge. You relieved? Okay. Okay. So the four T's I talked about. Teaching. All through here, he's going to be teaching about himself. His name's Yahweh Rapha. Over the battle, he's going to declare another same. Yahweh Nisi. Okay. He's teaching Israel about himself, about how he moves, how he works. Do you get this? Okay. Training. He's training them on how to listen to him. Don't listen casually because they go out to collect manna 
every day. The sixth day, they're supposed to collect twice as much. There's some folks that still go out on the seventh day. You're not listening to me. So they're learning how to listen. They're learning how to obey. They're learning how to war. They're learning how to manage conflicts by delegating, getting another judge in places, teaching and training. And then, of course, there's going to be testing, lots of testing. Will you trust me in this or not? The test about their thirsting, how are they going to respond to that? Again, my favorite phrase from a friend in seminar, everything in life will drive you either into the heart of Jesus or away from the heart of Jesus. When the thirst is there, will it drive you into his heart or away? There's just always that decision. Testing of dealing, how they're going to deal with bitterness, obedience, provision, the question about what is love, okay? Peter was getting that test. Do you get this? Hello. Okay. Thomas was getting there. All that was going on, all that testing. And all of it leads to transitions, okay? They're moving out of Israel from freedom where they were like a bunch of convicts have been set free to community. They're going to be connected in by Torah. They're going to move from the vague of what they understood about God to great specificity. And they get the Torah. They get his word. Here's your direction. Here's how you walk in alignment with me. It's for your own good that you do this. And they move from the distance of God being kind of vague and out there to an intimacy where they actually hear the voice of God. Hello? All that's going on. All that has significance for us in this time. So let me just link quickly then to the tribe of Issachar. Issachar is the second tribe because when God rearranged the tribes in the wilderness, who was first? Judah. Who was second? Issachar. Who was third? Zebulun. Yeah, those three are really, really critical. But let me just link in here because we have too much fun with this. Every time you got tale of two women, Leah and Rachel, right? Leah was the one that had the weak eyes as the Queen King James. She just wasn't much of a looker, okay? And, um, well, we know the story of Jacob. But anyway, so these two women are having an all-out war based on the husband, right? And it's all tied back into how many kids you have. And Leah has had a number of kids, but now she's become barren. And it's just like frustrating her to no end. Well, then her firstborn, Reuben, comes in. During wheat harvest, Reuben went out into the fields and found some mandrake plants, which he brought to his mother, Leah. Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, wasn't it enough that you took away my husband? Will you take my son's mandrakes too? Right? The mandrakes were considered sort of a love potion number nine. I'm so, oh, man. Sorry. Some of you who are old enough remember that song? Love potion number nine. Yeah, okay, you, you still, you, you got to listen to it. It's pretty funny. It, it's, a, it's a ballad kind of song. And yeah, I did, you didn't have to do that. You just, you know. I guess, okay, well, you got to develop the range. Get your wingspan going, okay? Yeah, yeah, got expand it. Anyway, there's this crazy song, Love Potion Number Nine, about this guy gets this and he starts kissing everybody in sight. But when I kissed a policeman on 45th and Vine, he broke my little bottle of Love Potion Number nine, and so this is like a love potion. So, Reuben, you, you got to keep going this because I love scripture, right? Reuben, the firstborn, right? I don't know how old he is now, if he's 10 or something like that, but he's, he's brought in these things and given them to his mom, Leah. And Rachel's eyeing him because she wants, you know, she wants to make it work well with Jacob. And so she says, Well, get him. And <laughs> They make a bargain. Very well, Rachel said. You can sleep. He can sleep you. That's Jacob. He can sleep with you tonight in return for your son's mandrakes. You give me the love potion. I'll give you the stud rights for the night. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not. It's your Bible. I didn't write this. I did not write this. I would have left all sorts of sections out, and it would have been really boring. Very clean. Very pg but it just wouldn't have been anywhere as fun. So when Jacob came in from the fields that evening, Leah went out to meet him. You must sleep with me. I have hired you with my son's mandrix. <laughs> Oldest profession in the world, and it's gotten turned on its head. Who's your daddy, Jacob? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. So he slept with her that night. And, you know, Leah, talk about breaking the cycle. And God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my wages because I've given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. So this would be the equivalent that you have a son and you call him Salary. <laughs> have you met my uh, fifth son, Salary? Why is he called that? Well, because I, I, I had paid my salary to my husband so we could have him. Oh, great. You going to put that on the kid? I, there's got to be a better name. Wages. Pay, oh, have you met my son, Paycheck? Paycheck? Well, yeah, I, I paid my husband to sleep with me, and we had the kid. You know, we have, our church is having a uh, marriage seminar next weekend. I'll pay for you to go. Paycheck, huh? Yeah, we call him PC for short. It's just, it's just. But hear this, though. You, you need to get this. It breaks the cycle of barrenness. So Issachar is directly related to breaking off barrenness. Hello? Hello? Whatever that is about, it may be about a child. It may be about relationships. It may be about things. It may be about creativity. How about creativity? And not only that, but it broke the cycle so much that she had another son, Zebulun. And so Leah, the one who was not favored by her husband, has Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, the first three tribes that God reorders in the link. And I think what also is interesting is Leah had a sense to perceive the time and season and knew what to do. Hey, okay, listen to me. <laughs> pay attention to the unusual in this time. When God, pay attention, hello. With eyes to see, and you, you know what I'm saying? Something unusual. Okay, God, what are you doing here? Is there something I need to attend to this? Okay. Most of the time, it's that God's given us all sorts of stuff, and we just won't pay attention. So there are 44 biblical references about the tribe of Issachar. This is the one that you probably know the best. We'll just reiterate it here. The tribe of Issachar who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. So this month, that Issachar anointing of knowing the times. And you know why they knew the times? They were called the Torah tribe. They studied the word. Now, you need to understand how this works. They understood the word so they could grasp hold of what was coming. The reason they understood the times and seasons and knew what to do is because they'd studied what God said in the word, and so they knew what to do. Do you get this? It's the same thing. They're the hinge tribe. They connect those things, which we desperately need, right? And then I love this prophecy by Moses. Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. Zebulun and Issachar have this phenomenal partnership, and it even uses a phrase about maybe a Zebulun and Issachar because it's a symbiotic, it's a cooperative relationship where each brings strengths and receives strengths where they're weak. Okay. Zebulun was known as the commerce tribe, okay, the one that was going out. Issachar was the one who understood the times and the seasons. Do you understand how critical that is if you're going out in business? <laughs> More disastrous decisions made business because somebody didn't understand the time and the season. You know, started too early or too late or something like this. Zebulun and Issachar connection is so critical. But I love this part of the prophecy. They will summon peoples to the mountain. That is the mountain of God. And there offer sacrifices of righteousness. They will feast on the abundance of the seas and on the treasures hidden in the sand. Yeah. It's just so strong. So I've shown you this before, but it's just kind of helpful. Judah... As we saw last month, do you remember? Judah is the door to the tabernacle, right? there, the front entrance there. And, and Judah has that extra dalet, which is, is the letter 
for a door from Yahweh to you Yuda to Yahweh is is that Dalet which is a door so they are like that front door on a safe Zebulun is the commerce tribe about the riches you just heard some of that and the hinge point in between is Issachar and without the hinge point you have either no protection on the goods or you have goods you can't even get to okay they're the hinge and they connect Issachar and Judah and Zebulun. And think about that. Here I have the tribe that is known for what? Worship and warfare. And here I have the tribe known for abundance and commerce. Okay, how do you connect those to the times and seasons? Okay, those three tribes, that, that three-fold cord at the head of the line, because they were the three in the front advance. Judah always went first into battle, etc., etc. Okay, tracking that, I'm going kind of, some of this you know. So what? First of all, can you see what this guy's doing? He's trying to pull two things together. It's not easy to increase your wingspan. Why? Because in the midst of this, God does a lot of teaching. He does a lot of training. He does a lot of testing, and it's openly about transitioning you. You, do you get this? The more you try to make sure you hold this while you do this, and you can't just do one or the other. You just try to grasp. You're not founded. You're not. You're. What are you really holding on to? If you're just here, all you're doing is rehearsing the past, and that's helpful. But God's going. I have more. If I wanted you to just stay there, I would not correct a direct link between Passover and Pentecost. I would have just left you in the pew with your salvation. Okay? Or I would have left you just out in the wilderness. You're out of Egypt. Happy wandering. Right? And ultimately, the stress of trying to hold those two, God will do teaching, training, testing, and ultimately it transitions things that are in us. So what? What are some of these about teaching? He will reveal himself to you in new ways. Just know that in the second month, he revealed himself in new names to Israel that they'd never heard of before. Hello? Do you know all the names of God? There are a lot of them, right? Do, do, you, do they mean something to you? How will he reveal himself to you? Part of when I, I recognize him and I'm, I'm talking to him, I recognize him as Yahweh Yaira, who sees and provides every need, right? You know that from, from um, Genesis and with Abraham. I know him as Yahweh Sitkanu, my righteousness, because he heals my every disease. Yahweh Rapha, because, or Yahweh Sitkanu, because he forgives my every sin. He is my righteousness. Yahweh Rapha, because he heals my every disease. Getting this? Yahweh Nisi, because he is my banner, he is my rallying point, he is my stronghold, and he is my defender. And Yahweh Shalom, because he is my peace and wholeness and rest. What do you, how will he reveal himself to you in this month? Hello? Yeah? Okay. So are you watching and then are you listening and are you prepared to let it sink in? You just maybe have to just get to know him as Jehovah Sneaky. Or Jehovah funny. Come on. Oh, lighten up. Some of you just don't. He is hilarious. You got to be kidding me. Okay. I mean, he made the ostrich, you know. Come on. Training. Same thing. He will be training us better how to listen, how to obey, how to war, how to manage conflicts. This is a, any of this relevant for you guys? Okay, all of it. I think so. There's testing. Okay, oops. A level of trust. Where's your trust? What's the level of thirst you have? Obedience, the process, provision about what is really love. Do you, he may just say to you, Jules, do you love me more than all of that? That's such a valid question. Any given point in time. John Eldridge says the most frightening question a husband ever asks his wife is this. So how are we doing? Do 
Do you love me? Do I what? Sorry, fiddler on the roof now. But the idea is, are we going to God and saying, so God, how, how, how are we doing? See, because he, he asked that for Peter, not to shame Peter. He does it because Peter's got to get this out of him. And Peter needs a promotion. Peter gets promoted in this month. Big time. And it's a transition. What's he going to transition you from and to what? Into deeper community, into greater specifics about your assignment, into greater intimacy with him. These are all things. Four T's. Yep. So, just some other big things. What's dried out? In the calling for water and the deep thirst, where are the dry places in you? And how are you going to let him meet you in that? Number two, what bitter thing needs to be addressed and healed? Okay, just let it. A friend of mine wrote a book about the woman at the well, and she called it Mara. Okay, the story of the woman at the well because of just who she was. That would probably be a good name. Because Mara means bitter. Right? What's your, what is the part in the Mara? How about this? What battle has worn you out because you've gone it alone or only on one front? And what does God need to say? Hey, you need to shift this. You're working it just in the natural. You need to get in the spirit. You're working it just in the spirit. It's time to get in the natural. You're doing it alone. You need to get some allies in it. No lone rangers. And how about this? What's what's the confrontation and the stuff that God that Jesus has to break off? Because this is a time when he broke it off, Peter. Okay? There was a stigma on Peter and it had to go. And you know what? Sometimes it'll feel like this. But it's not to destroy you, right? It's to break off that stuff. So reach back, reach forward, increase your wingspan. You know, the thing that's fascinating about a wing, a literal wingspan is that the better your wings, right, the more you can fly. So, say I'm going to reach back. I'm going to reach forward. I'm going to increase my wingspan. And then put your hands here. So, Lord, teach me, train me, test me. Transition me and set my heart on fire. Father, there's so much in your word in this time. I, I love, I don't know, this is an amazing time, Lord. This is big. This is big. We've come through Passover. We're heading towards Pentecost and all you want to do. And you need us to reach and to reach, Lord. So, Lord, show us what it is. Give us the recall to reach back and remember just a gazillion things, Lord. Make them specific. Make them vital. Lord, bring to our minds things we have hadn't even thought about. Ways in which you saved us. You delivered us. You brought us into and out of things, Lord. And then, Lord, show us the promises that maybe we're afraid to reach for. or We don't think we qualify for or whatever else, Lord. Stir up those words that were spoken into us, that were activated by your word, the times we just heard you touch us. And Lord, let us go back and remember and reach and reach. And then Lord, deal with the inside and that stress sometimes between those two parts of the hinge and make us stronger. Lord, your word is living and active. We loose it afresh now. Here, all who will hear this, that it will divide soul and spirit and bring freedom and walk us all into more. In the name of Jesus, amen.